We're here with Dave McIntosh, CTS coach. And uh, Dave, you just got back from a very special trip. To, uh, tell people about it. I went to Rwanda, Africa for two months to work with the Rwandan national <coughs> cycling team over there. Because we were so close to the tour of Rwanda, which occurred at the end of November, most of it just entailed going out, riding with the guys, executing the training program that was set in place. Some of those days I rode on the bicycle with the guys and some of the days I rode on the motorcycle. And from a skill standpoint, you know, where do the, the guys on Team Rwanda stack up in terms of uh, you know, being able to fit into, say, a European peloton? I'd say physiologically they're knocking on the door. They, from what they showed in the Tour of Rwanda, a couple of, them, a couple of them have a little ways to go. As far as riding skills go, they're amazing. And they're amazing because they have to be, because riding in Rwanda is such a crazy thing that you have to be a good bike handler, you have to be a good descender, and because there are so many hills, you have to be a good climber even to exist in that, in that capacity. And you know, you've been a, a CTS coach for a long time. Um, obviously, it's rewarding to work with athletes in the U.S. and work with athletes who are um, committed to their sports. You know, what's the difference working with Team Rwanda and uh, the, the folks you've been working with over the last few months? I think the thing that stands out the most, and I get goosebumps as I sit here and think about this, is their knowledge of suffering is completely different than what ours is. Their history, some of these guys are old enough to have experienced the genocide firsthand. Some have lasting effects from that. And so their suffering, their knowledge of suffering takes them to someplace completely different than anything that you or I or most people in the West have ever experienced or, or ever will experience in their lives. So when they go to ride a bike and they suffer on a bike for them, it's a pleasurable thing. When we think about suffering, we think about doing power intervals or any type of climbing repeats or whatever. It's sometimes, I mean, it's difficult all the time, but for them to listen to them describe it, a lot of them are running away or avoiding or, or coming to terms, I, I'd say more coming to terms with the things that they have experienced in their lives personally with just trying to live, with just trying to simply exist. And what do you th do? You think there'll be any change to your approach to coaching now that you've returned? Do you think it'll change the way you approach uh, your profession? Yes, absolutely. Because, <laughs> I mean, for me personally, I've seen how somebody can do so much with so little. It's it's given me a completely different perception, a completely different understanding and appreciation of what I have when I come home. And how did Team Rwanda fare uh, in, that, in the Tour of Rwanda? Adrian Nianshuti, uh, Team Rwanda's top rider, I believe finished ninth or 10th overall. He was the top African. He won, he won the Af best African jersey. The rest of the guys were, um, well, we had two teams of six. So the, our, our top team finished primarily in the top uh, 30 riders. So on the whole, definitely a success also for Team Rwanda. Uh, an experience you would like to do again? You think you'll uh, try to get back and do more of it? I would love to go back. It was a phenomenal experience. I miss the guys. The, the nice thing about the guys is they're more than a team. Really, they're a brotherhood. They're very tight. They serve each other very well. And that, I'd say more than anything else, was probably the most inspiring thing because not only did they work together, they lived together, they ate together, everything they did. And it was always... It was frequently them putting their teammates ahead of themselves.